country is really welcoming all those 52 people, 53 people back from their uh, imprisonment in Iran. So this is for the hostages, a little yellow ribbon in charcoal and pastel. Uh, here I am on Tuesday uh, evening at half past six to play uh, the game of drawing. I thought that I would become political a little bit because we're in a new administration. It's only a few days old. And maybe I thought that I could play some games with it. Unfortunately, our telephone is not working. However, uh, I mean, the transmission from the studio isn't working into the control room and so on. So if you want to call, uh, I'm not talking in that one. Oh, if you want to call, call and somebody will scribble the note and then bring it around here and I'll read it and see what your questions are. Whenever I do the kind of show that I've prepared, the questions come uh, quite often and uh, a lot of requests take place. If I can't speak to everybody who, to, who calls, that's because time won't allow. So let's just start and um, take my little yellow ribbon off. I'll give this to the uh, Brookhaven Cable Office and maybe they'd like to hang that up uh, this week sometime. But um, let's start in. All of, all of the drawings that I have done, I have prepared in, uh, in, a, in as best I can because I draw from television and I also draw from life. Uh, some, most of the things that I'm going to be drawing tonight are from television. And um, you'll see what I mean by that because I have not been within eye range of Ronald Reagan. But... As long as I'm going to be political, I think that I'll start off and um, maybe even point out that I don't believe that there's any uh, ladies, women, females, or the like, been appointed to Reagan's cabinet. So I thought possibly a cabinet? One? Okay, one. Maybe we have one lady appointed to the cabinet. I don't know which one it is. But there is a remarkable absence of females in the political scene. So I thought I'd play, I'd play with that. Um, let me just see what I can come up with here to show you uh, what, exactly what we're talking about. on something, that's exactly what I'm doing because charcoal tends to become very dusty and you have to keep it out of the, uh, out of the way. So I have to keep blowing at it and um, that'll be the sound effects for the evening. Reagan's face uh, seems to be in wonderful order from here on up, but then all of a sudden down here things sort of fall apart 
and uh, yeah, for caricaturing, it's wonderful. He, he's as, it says, as a, uh, as great a caricature subject as uh, Mr. Carter was and Mr. Nixon. And so we have, uh, with, uh, with, um, with uh, apologies to anybody whose feelings might be hurt, this is not meant with any malice, it's all meant in good fun, uh, that caricatures take place like so. And that's the beginning of my political uh, evening on Brookhaven Live. So if we were to pursue this um, posture that there are very few women in Mr. Reagan's cabinet. And also, I think that uh, ERA looks like it might, well, it might have a struggle on its hands. So, my program tonight, World, is going to be talking about women. Now, Mr. Reagan, as we know, was in theater and films and uh, made many of them, and he um, might be able to cast his cabinet from a source of supply, uh, namely uh, showbiz. So let's see, just for fun, as I say, no malice and certainly no disrespect, but just for the sake of some vague kind of entertainment, maybe we could play with this. is wonderful. It covers a great deal of ground and it makes uh, a good strong impression. I'm using a paper called Sumi paper. It's what is used by Japanese and Chinese artists to do those uh, very quick ink drawings uh, that you've seen demonstrated on uh, television a number of times. And it's a uh, good inexpensive paper, in case anybody wonders about the supplies that I use. I'm using ordinary charcoal. Uh, and so one of the reasons that I've done this is to, um, is to talk about women in politics and to kind of go back a few thousand years to say that uh, they really work. Sometimes I do believe that uh, if this is any kind of a faithful reproduction of a of a drawing that was taken from one of the bas reliefs in Amarna, uh, it shows our very well known uh, lady politician Cleopatra. Of course, uh, this is not a caricature; it's just a very quick uh, drawing that I, I think is rather it's a rather handsome depiction of this lady. She was uh, she was kind of amazing. There was almost nothing that she'd stop at to get her way, as we all know from history. Uh, some women in, in American history and in European history have been the same 
way, um, Marie Antoinette certainly got what she wanted. And uh, Queen Victoria uh, got so much uh, what she wanted that an entire era was named for her. Uh, so women have got their, women are able to do their thing rather, uh, rather effectively. Uh, so let's say, for instance, now that I've made my point about the fact that women can make a name for themselves in politics and in ruling, uh, let's let's pretend that possibly this following drawing, which anybody who cares to guess whom it is, can. Uh, they can call in, as a matter of fact. I don't know if I'll get the message, but let me see. I've prepared these drawings, so there's a very faint, uh, faint uh, um, uh, sketch, but I think it's much more fun for you to watch me draw, so that's why I'm doing it this way instead of just showing you finished drawings. Someone named Keith wants to see the Ayatollah. What'd you say? Someone named Keith wants to see the Ayatollah. Wants to, oh, somebody named Keith wants to see Ayatollah. Well, uh, I, I could, I've done that before. I've done, uh, I've done Mr. Khomeini or whatever his name is before. Uh, and um, I can bring that drawing back. But I think that maybe I'm like Mr. What was the name of the hostage who said the only way he wants to go back to Iran is in a B-52? I think maybe if I were to redraw the Ayatollah, it would not be kind. So I think maybe we'll just keep everything kind. Somebody called Michael wants what? Oh, wants it. All right, he, Michael can have it. I'm afraid I tore it a little bit, Michael, but you may have it. Uh, be happy to let you have it. Michael what? Oh, well, anyway, we'll put Michael on it, and if you want it, come up and get it at the, um, at the station here on uh, Industrial Road in Port Jefferson. I'm sure that uh, most people know where it is by now. Um, this lady is um, a favorite of many people. She's a favorite uh, as far as for, for, for caricaturing. In my, for, for me, she's a favorite for caricaturing because it's also, um, it's also defined. Her features are very defined. Uh, I have a certain fondness for this particular caricature, and it also um, has a hair like our, one of our camera ladies here, Rhonda. It has hair very similar to this, which is very flattering to Rhonda. Equally as flattering to this lady, if anybody wants to guess what that one is. How much do you charge? How much do I charge? They're $10. Um, the, uh, I'm not sure which cabinet post uh, could be um, uh, given to this lady, but it could be just, well, we could just sort of play with the idea. If anybody's got any ideas out there, which cabinet post would be... Um, well filled. If Mr. Reagan would decide to use some stars from show business, maybe we could get some amusing comments about that. Huh? <laughs> we have uh, people here in the studio making their own uh, casting of the job. I wouldn't want any uh, of those jobs except maybe uh, the um, arts councils or something because that would be my bag, but I certainly don't want to get involved in Trying to run this enormous country, thank you. Anyhow, let's see what we can come up with uh, with another lady. If you're still interested, we're getting on to a quarter to seven. And uh, isn't that right? Okay. 
Let's see if you can get this one. This one is a rather difficult one to do. Uh, this, uh, the face is, you see when a face is very even and when it's got absolutely uh, symmetrical features, namely if the, if the face is properly divided into three equal sections, and if there is nothing which you might say exaggerated about it, it's very difficult to do a caricature. But uh, we'll try to do this one and see if you can guess it. If you can't, then I'll just tell you and I, won't feel, I will not feel as though I've been too bad. Get closer in that. Well, that's a nice bright sound. What does that mean? Oh, I see. Somebody's at the front door. Well, this is a, this is a home show. You see, you can you can have the front doorbell ring as you're working. You can have people call to you from the kitchen or something. changes a great deal. She really very often doesn't always look the same, which makes it quite difficult. Because she's a lady of many... Her, her mind is always in the same place. She has a very strong uh, opinions, and I, I think that uh, if you get who this is, then... Uh, but if you don't, that's, um, that's okay. Well, maybe it didn't, uh, maybe it uh, has not done as, as good a job as I had hoped, but this is the way I see her. Her father is a famous actor, and she's very active in environmental and nuclear things, and she's been very controversial for quite a while. And um, as I say, she has very regular features, and if you don't know who it is, you don't know the... Yeah, Jane Fonda. Um, I, if, if it missed, it's because her features are so regular she, uh, that she's quite difficult to caricature. She's not like Jean Shalit, for instance, you know, who's all caricature. So anyway, that's, uh, that, that's probably as close as I can get. She has a sort of that, that kind of uh, small, tight mouth and uh, two little sort of woodchuck teeth that you always show. And she's uh, usually got that worried look. You want to get a close-up on that? Anything funny that I ought to know is happening? <laughs> okay. Oh. Now, let me, uh... Well, maybe the, uh... Let me put this... Should I put this over here? Should I put this up on the wall here? That might, uh... might stay for a while. We've got ourselves... Oh, let's put that. Let's do that. And I'll make a little gallery here picture. They, maybe they don't won't all be in the same picture, but um, this is what my studio looks like, so you're sort of getting a, a peek into the disorder in general. Somebody wants to know if you ever painted a picture of Olga Kaltenborn? Oh! I knew Mrs. Kaltenborn. No, I never painted a picture of Mrs. Kaltenborn, but I knew her, and I loved her. She was a very fine, lovely lady, and uh full of fascinating adventures. Uh, I even went sailing with her once in her boat. I'll never forget that one. Uh, let me put this over here. I'm dressing up my little TV studio. Is that getting to show? Good. Um, and where is my drawing? Oh, there's my drawing from Mike. Well, let's, for instance, uh, say that 
we need to have uh, somebody uh, to promote the arts and the performing arts and the musical arts. And so maybe this lady could be part of the governmental body that would do that. Can we get in on close on this one? Oh, that's better. We'll take a break in five minutes. Take a break in five minutes, all right. Whatever you say. Pete's Dragon. I don't think I could do Pete's Dragon from memory. But I can do a dragon, so. Now, let's not be too unkind. We don't have to put the bags too heavy. Well, it would seem to me that maybe uh, this one, if anybody can guess this one, it would be nice. Anybody know? She's an opera singer. Oh, no. Uh, this lady uh, is from Australia and is a coloratura soprano and a play just uh, and, and a soprano and her name is Joan Sutherland. Maybe one of the things that would make it more identifiable is that this lady has got red hair. So because we've been working in black and white for a few minutes now and maybe the advent of color would be interesting, I'll pick Miss Sutherland as the one to put color on. We're going to break in a few minutes. I have an announcement or two in the middle. Maybe fix the equipment. I never know when something's going to break down. We are operating on sometimes uh, limited equipment and sometimes equipment that is temperamental. So without letting it get too much in the way, I think we can we can break anytime you want to. I'll just continue doing this. And then when you break, we can come back later. My paintings look like mud. I don't know what's wrong. Help! Tired of your masterpieces looking like moldy attic relics? Sounds like a job for Pineland's brand, 100% pure gum spirits of turpentine, distilled from pristine Atlantic pine forests. Pineland's does all those dirty jobs, from thinner to brush rinse to palette cleaner. Come home to Pineland's, you'll never regret it. Warning, turpentine has no proven metaphysical properties. Toxic effects may include oil burning, vomiting, diarrhea, hematuria, urinary pain, albuminuria, bradycardia, coma, and death. Keep your brushes clean with Pineland's turpentine. Flake white, zinc white, titanium white, throw them all away! Alexander Williams brings you No Magic White, ideal for all your bright blends. Exclusive linseed and hemp oil base, guaranteed not to yellow for over 400 years or your money back. My paintings had no consistency at all with those other whites. With No Magic White, I know exactly how to mix my pinks and sky blues. I get the right shade every time. Pat Windrow famously said, there's no magic in painting. Now you too can paint like Pat with No Magic White, available at fine art stores everywhere. 
It's okay, Brad. We've all had trouble being regular from time to time. If you're having fewer than three bowel movements a week, like poor Brad here, you're the perfect candidate for digestive assurance. As a lack of turpentine prevents keeping your brushes clean, lack of fiber in the diet prevents a clean colon. By eating one serving of digestive assurance per day, your colon will be empty, but you'll be full of confidence. Digestive Assurance, your go-to so that you can go. All right. Well, with a, if we were to get in on this one and get in close on this, you'd see that I have added uh, what uh, Miss Sutherland wears. She wears, uh, she wears rather heavy blue eyeshadow when she's performing. And because she's a redhead, she almost always appears in some kind of green. So just to add color to an otherwise black and white program, I've taken the time to do this. And we'll carry on with our next project. We've gotten some calls. Uh, we got a call in, what was it for? Oh, Pete's Dragon, yes. Uh, somebody wanted me to do Pete's Dragon. I'm not sure that I could, uh, that I can do Pete's Dragon. I haven't memorized the characteristics of Pete's Dragon. I can do a dragon. I believe I could probably do a dragon. It won't be Pete's, but it'll be mine. Somebody named Pete called in for it. Somebody named Pete called in for Pete's Dragon. Well, we'll do Pat's Dragon. <laughs> Uh, Pete's dragon is uh, is a very definite uh, design of a dragon that was, uh, I believe it's Disney, isn't it? Yeah, I think Disney. And uh, you, you don't mess around with Disney. You you try to keep it as as faithful to Disney as possible. Well, there she is up there. All right. Now let's see what we can come up with. We have a, I have another. I've planned another drawing here. It may be difficult for some people to guess what it is, but. Um, because I find that uh, people read the news and they don't really memorize faces. The faces have to be really very familiar uh, for people to remember them. You have to see them constantly. Maybe this lady is not seen that often, but uh, let's try it anyway and see what we see, see whether or not you can uh, put your memory back and see whether you can uh, visualize who this lady is. Got a close-up on this? Yes. Don't forget now, all these, oh, this lady has made it in politics. This is not a fantasy or, or, a, um, or a suggestion that she get into politics. She has already made it. And um, as I say, she may not be as familiar to you. I watch these things very care carefully because, as I've told you, I draw from television all the time. And um, so I'm, I'm familiar with all these things. The uh, remarkable thing about this lady is... Uh, a brilliant, a pair of really brilliant blue eyes, which I'll put in here, and it might help to identify her. Um, she is also blondish. Hmm? Anybody know? Ah, we've got some very, very bright camera people in here. Um, maybe somebody wants to call in and tell, tell me who this is. And if nobody can call in and tell me who it is, Gary's, I mean, Mark has already told us who it is. But then we'll, we will reveal the identity later. And because she lives in a cool climate, the blush is always on the cheeks. And I think that the addition of color is always rather fun. On these, on these caricatures. Anybody 
Anybody know who that is? Uh, Teresa said Betty Ford. Well, it's not Betty Ford, but it's very reminiscent of Betty Ford because of the hair. She's she's a very that's a very good eye, but it isn't Betty Ford. Uh, maybe there's one more phone call, and we will be able to uh, let's we keep looking at this maybe for a moment. No, okay, it's um, it's Margaret Thatcher of England. She is a prime minister. And uh, if you talk about having made it in politics, I think that you can admit that that's really making it. So we have that to put up on our little gallery of drawings here. I don't know. I think this is rather fun. We've never done this before. Let's put Margaret Thatcher next to Reagan because they're both big wheels. It's beginning to really look like a studio, isn't that nice? Okay. Well, let me just carry on. Just keep drawing. We're going to have plenty of time to play with dragons and things, I think. Now, this lady is in the news very often. I'm really not too sure why, but she is. Shirley Temple. At what age? <laughs> Shirley Temple is still around, fortunately, because if Shirley Temple were to um, shake off this mortal coil, then I know that I'm not far behind. Uh, well, we'll see. If I, I, I'm not sure that I can remember Shirley Temple, but uh, that's a nice request. I can remember all these things and maybe do it some other time. in Naples, Italy. She's a film star. I don't know what I don't know what she could do in our government's cabinet, but she is a rather famous lady. She writes apparently okay. And uh, Susan wants to know why I trace everything. I don't trace things. I have prepared these drawings at home like homework. Um, I have drawn them from the television, and I prepare them with minor sketching beforehand so that it doesn't take me uh, a half an hour to do one drawing. If I were to take, uh, if I were to do them from life, it would take me a half an hour for each drawing, and I don't think that anyone would remain interested enough to watch that procedure take place. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, that my um, being able to cut the time short is a kindness to people. Uh, they're all my original drawings, but they have been done beforehand with a very minor kind of sketching. It's what you call preparation. Anybody guess who this is? Who? No, Italian lady who lived in Naples. She just wrote, yes. 
Mark almost said Gloria Swanson, but he, but I have managed to catch him in time. What's the call? Is there anything going on? Uh, somebody said you did some Chinese art with simple watercolor. And yeah. Will you do that again soon? Yes, I'll be glad to. Somebody I wants me to do the Chinese watercolor. watercolor kind of drawing. I'll be glad to do that again soon. Walter? Walter wants me to do the Chinese watercolor drawing. Well, that's very good. I shall, Walter, I'll plan that for within the next few weeks to do some of this um, very simplified watercolor, uh, Chinese kind of oriental watercolor technique. I'll be glad to. But anyway, I believe that this has been guessed as Sophia Loren. Uh, so let's add a little bit of color as long as we've got some time. And I'll show you how I do this. I always manage to leave a little bit of uh, light on the lower lip. Want to get a close-up? Eric yeah. wants Marilyn Monroe. Eric wants Marilyn Monroe. Okay, we'll do that next time. Uh, I'll have to get some reference material on her. You want to get a close-up on this? Because I'm doing something that might be of... Uh... Jackie Kennedy. Oh, that's a good one. Jackie Kennedy is a, a very, uh, very caricaturable face. Okay, Jackie Kennedy. Uh, Sophia Loren uh, wears rather intense eyeshadow, as I recall, and as I remember, her color scheme is brownish, kind of. Tom wants Ronald Reagan. Well, we'll get back to Ronald Reagan in a little while. He's hanging on the wall over there. We can put some color on him in a little while. But anyway, there we have. Uh, my particular uh, rendition of Sophia Loren. Veronica. Veronica wants John Lennon. Oh, good idea. John Lennon. Uh, somebody, Veronica wants John Lennon. Good, I'll do that. I'll plan another show like this for next week. I'll do all these next week. We got Jackie Kennedy, uh, John Lennon. Who? John Who? John Lennon. Um, Carol Carol I hope you're writing all this down because uh, maybe I'd better do it. Maybe I'd better do this. Uh, Monroe, Shirley Temple, Temple. Shirley Temple. Lennon. Lennon, who? Oh. Marilyn Monroe, you got that? I got that. Peace Dragon, Jackie Kennedy. Oh, Jackie Kennedy, right. Jackie Well, you see, that's the thing with this, uh, these live programs. You have to sort of improvise as you go along. Nothing is planned except my drawings are planned, but I can't plan what the public is going to do out there, which makes it much more interesting. Oh. Who? Huh? Wally wants Farrah Fawcett. Farrah Fawcett. Okay, one moment. What's his name? Wally. Wally wants Farrah Fawcett. Everybody wants Farrah Fawcett. Well, how about uh, whatever happened to um, Bo Derek? Mark wants Bo Derek. Mark wants Bo Derek, all right. Mark wants Bo Derek. <laughs> An interesting terminology saying you want Bo Derek. Nobody seems to say I want a drawing of Bo Derek. They simply say I want. Bo. All right. Okay, let's put uh, Miss Loren up here. Women are wonderful to caricature because they always have got eyelashes and red mouths and lipstick and, and cheeks and hair and so on. Men are a little bit uh, different. Let's see what we can come up with now. This one might, uh, this one, I don't know. Uh, I may have missed on this one, but you can tell me. My adoring public will tell me whether I've failed or not. Let's see. Am I standing too much in the way? Kenny 
on, Spurt Reynolds. All right. All right. Maybe Kenny is a short for Kendra. Kendra. Maybe he wants to trend down. Bert Reynolds. Bert Reynolds was just given an honorary doctoral degree. Dr. Reynolds. I love it. This lady possesses probably the largest mouth I have ever seen, and she is wonderful to caricature. I cannot, I cannot emphasize the largesse of her mouth. Rhonda. <laughs> well, it's not Rhonda. This lady, I believe, is a singer. Popular singer? You know who it is. That's right. So I haven't missed too far. Rhonda is right. She may guessed Carly Simon. And so I haven't missed the mark too badly. You know, it's funny. Sometimes you make it and sometimes you don't. And Carly Simon wears almost no makeup. But we have to make some kind of a point of her mouth. And I believe she's got absolutely wonderful green eyes. Jimmy wants Jimmy Carter. Jimmy wants Jimmy Carter. Jimmy who? <laughs> okay. Well, I have to now make some more notes. Now, Gloria wants Elvis Presley. Elvis. And Bumpy Gokart. Who wants that? Mark wants Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. Well, I've got a list of... Humphrey Bogart. Well, Jimmy wants Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy... Well, I've done him a number of times on this program. I'm not sure that I'll do that again, but... We might play with it. Okay. We have um we have just a few minutes. Let me give me let me give Carly Simon a little bit of color here to add to our general color scheme. I believe her hair is isn't it blondish? Isn't she so dark? Is it brown? Oh. Well I'm sure glad we've got some observant people around here. Sort of Yeah, that's alright. Now you see, when you take the pastel, you can surround the face with the color and make it stand out that way. Little tiny, little tricks that I'd like to pass on while we're playing this, having this entertainment program. This is not really a lesson in painting and drawing. This is more an entertainment program. Joe wants Hank Aaron. Who? Joe wants what? Joe wants Hank Aaron and thinks that that looks like Ben Midler. Oh, he thinks that looks like Bette Midler. Well, I have one of Bette Midler that I'll show you next week, and I think you'll revise your feeling about it, because the one that I did of Bette Midler on this program a couple of uh, months ago uh, is, much more, um, is much more resembling her than this. But anyway, Carly Simon. Um, Carol Channing. Carol Channing. Somebody wants Carol Channing? All right, I'm going to have to stop taking these notes. I have almost no more paper. Carol Channing. What? John wants Carol Channing. Carol Channing, okay, that's, but that's John. And Hank Aaron, okay, I think I'm not going to take okay. any more names. This will be, uh, be my assignment for next week to do these drawings. It'll take me some time. Excuse me a minute while I put some order in the studio here and uh, hang this one up. Just hang on a second, just look at the pictures. You can scan from one to the other. 
um, Rhonda. I'll take this one off. I've lost um, John Sutherland. Where is she? Oh, there she is. Oh, yes, she's in full colour. Okay. See? Now, I'm going to wind up now this prepared uh, session. Everybody can see what that is. And I think that possibly if the White House or if the administration was going to have a... Um, what is it called when you've got a pet a dog? Is it a mascot? All right, and maybe a mascot could be could be uh, devised for the uh, White House, and I think we ought to spend some time. What did you say? Five. Five minutes? I can't believe it. My watch must be wrong. Well, I'll try to try to hurry through this as best I can. Uh, the time has, of course, flown. Close up, Rhonda. Wouldn't that be much better? Once I had a friend who was rather snobbish about things like cartoons, and in a very superior manner he said, what is wrong with people to worship a mouse? He was of course referring to Mickey Mouse. Well, he may become, he might become even more superior and even haughtier if he thought that possibly that mouse had been replaced by a pig. But anyway, I don't mind saying that I think Miss Piggy is an absolute wonder and a credit to the American scene and without her I think the place would say the world would simply not be the same again and if the White House or if our administration now this new one down there has got any sense at all it'll have as a mascot Miss Piggy don't you agree don't you really agree We're running out of time, so be it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this program today. I expect that a lot of people called and wish they could have spoken or asked me questions, but as it was, we managed all right. Maybe next week when I come in, it's going to be fixed and we can speak in person to, these, uh, to, to, to the audience, which is the whole point of this Brookhaven Live. I have enjoyed coming in uh, today and hope you've had fun. Let me do these wonderful, absolutely exotic eyes that are the trademark of Miss Piggy. Good, you've got a close-up, that's fine. And I'll just keep working and when they decide to come to the end of the show, well then they'll just come to the end of the show.
My paintings look like mud. I don't know what's wrong. Help! Tired of your masterpieces looking like moldy attic relics? Sounds like a job for Pinelands brand, 100% pure gum spirits of turpentine, distilled from pristine Atlantic pine forests. Pinelands does all those dirty jobs, from thinner to brush rinse to palette cleaner. Come home to Pinelands, you'll never regret it. Warning, turpentine has no proven metaphysical properties. Toxic effects may include oral burning, vomiting, diarrhea, hematuria, urinary pain, albuminuria, bradycardiac, and death. Keep your brushes clean. Keep your brushes clean. Don't let your car might pollute your meridian cream. Finance is the best. Surpasses all the rest. To get the cleanest brush you've ever seen. Keep your brushes clean with Highland Stripping Tea. Flake white, zinc white, titanium white, throw them all away. Alexander Williams brings you no magic white, ideal for all your bright blends. Exclusive lead-free linseed and hemp oil base, guaranteed not to yellow for 400 years or your money back. I swear, you're going to be tickled to death with this product. My paintings had no consistency at all with those other whites. Now, with no magic white, I know exactly how to mix my pinks and sky blues. I get the right shade every time. Pat Windrow famously said, there's no magic in painting. You too can paint like Pat with no magic white. Warning, not to be used for narcotic purposes. Do not try to get high on hemp-based paint. Visit your local licensed cannabis distributor for proper, safe, non-alcoholic, mind-altering substances. You too can paint like Pat with no magic white. You too can paint like Pat with no magic white. You too can paint like Pat with no magic white. You too can paint like Pat with no magic white. Hey Brad, how's it going? Sally, I really don't want to talk about that right now. Because of that constipation that you're having a problem with? It's okay, Brad. We've all had trouble being regular every now and again. Concerned about constipation? Well, who wouldn't be? If you're having fewer than three bowel movements a week, like poor Brad here, you're the perfect candidate for digestive assurance. As a lack of turpentine prevents keeping your brushes clean, lack of fiber in the diet prevents a clean colon. By eating one serving of digestive assurance per day, your colon will be empty, but you'll be full of confidence. 
Do not eat more than one serving of digestive assurance per day or gas, colon explosions, and or hallucinations may occur. Active ingredients include fiber, fiber, and more fiber. Fiber origins are not allowed to be disclosed due to an NDA with the inventor. Digestive Assurance, your go-to so that you can go.